<coughs> Welcome to First Baptist Church of Goshen. Run, Tammy, run. Let's go. Let's all stand. We'll go to page 431. <coughs> 431. Silent night, falling night, all is gone, all is bright, round yon virgin, mother and child. Oh, if it's so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace, silent night, holy night. Shepherds quake at the sun. Glory stream from heaven upon heavenly hosts sing hallelujah. Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Silent night, holy night, Son of God, love's pure light, radiant beams from thy holy face. With the dawn of redeeming grace, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, Jesus, Lord, at thy birth, silent night, holy night. Wondrous star, live thy life with the angels. Let us sing, Hallelujah to our King, Christ the Savior is born. Christ the Savior is born. Thank you. Well, good evening. Let's try it again. Good evening. Oh, there we go. All right. There's at least a few more of you awake now. It is good to be in God's house tonight. I got a letter this week. Uh, be in prayer for... Brother and Sister Broughton. Brother Broughton has pastored uh, Celine Baptist for 45 plus years, and uh, he is resigning as pastor of Celine. And so they are doing a uh, they are doing a ministry appreciation service for him on December the 10th. And uh, I've known Brother Broughton for a long. time. For a long time, just since I was a kid, but they have the uh, Celine or Camp Canaan. They have the youth camps and then have family camp every year. And so you be in prayer for Brother and Sister Broughton uh, as they transition out of the ministry there as pastor. Uh, and uh, just pray for their new pastor. I've met him. I cannot remember his name. He's a younger fella. But uh, just uh, pray for uh, pray for them. I wanted to read one of our missionary prayer letters. This is the Rosenbaum family in Ghana, West Africa. 
It says, Dear praying friends, uh, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every, in every prayer of mine for you all, making requests with joy for your fellowship and the gospel from the first day until now. Of course, it's Philippians chapter 1, 3 through 5. But he says, We are certainly thankful for each and every one of you who have supported us in this ministry the Lord has given us. We came to Ghana about six and a half years ago. It's hard to believe it's been that long. It says, And we have seen Him work in our lives in powerful ways. As we continue to go forward, the incredible amount of support we have received and continue to receive from so many and in so many ways humbles us, bringing, bringing to mind how truly blessed we, have, or blessed we are to be serving God here in Kumasi. I am happy to report that on October 9th, we held our first Sunday service at the Bible study in uh, Mam Pong. Uh, it was a wonderful day filled with blessings from the Lord. We are thrilled to see our benches nearly full of adults and children. Several people who were a part of our Bible study in a, in a different area under Brother Andrew Aaron live near our meeting place and have committed to attending the services going forward. One of those people in a, is a young man named Albert. I had the privilege of preaching the gospel to Albert back in 2019, just before we took our first furlough. I was overjoyed to hear that shortly after we left Ghana, Albert believed the gospel and became born again. Uh, he has been a faithful believer with a desire to serve the Lord. He is now translating for me in most of the services. Brother Yen Adams and his family uh, have also joined with us after attending the Bible study in uh, Bakro uh, for the last few years. He and his wife and five children are another tremendous blessing. We're also so happy that our friends... Uh, uh, that our friend DeGraft and his children have uh, now have a church to attend that is only a few minutes from their home. They no longer have to travel 90 minutes or more each Sunday to attend services. Uh, we are now having three services a week. Uh, we, uh, we look forward to seeing how God will bless the new work, this new work. He has led us to this point and we are fully and we fully intend to continue following him step by step as he leads us on. We do have a special requ uh, prayer request for you at this time. Kelly has been struggling with her health for some time. Uh, and that is uh, Brother Adam's wife. Last month, she was able to contact a, a natural doctor in the States uh, who has helped her to develop a treatment for her uh, autoimmune issues. The problems that she has been expecting are not going to be resolved quickly, but at this point, her body is responding favorably to the treatment. Now, this illness has affected her ability to function normally in day-to-day -day activity. We are praying that healing continues and that she will return to full health as soon as possible. Please pray that we, uh, that we will be able to continue to find, uh, to find them here as shipping... Oh, sorry, I skipped a line. Uh, to find all the necessary supplements that she needs to heal her body. We need to find them here as shipping them in from abroad could be problematic. And we know our God is the great physician and we trust him to bring healing uh, in his time. Please pray for Kelly and the rest of our family as we work through this difficult time. Thank you all. Uh, thank you all again for your faithful support for our family or of our family. Each one of you is appreciated and loved more than, uh, more than you can know. God bless you all because he lives the Rosenbaum family. Um, Brother Adam and Miss Kelly, my wife and I have, uh, have had a very close friendship with over the past uh, probably 10 years or so, 12 years or so. And uh, they are a wonderful family, uh, very devoted to what God has called them to. And uh, they, they come back home, and even their kids, when they come back in the States, they enjoy the furlough, they enjoy the time they get to see uh, friends and family, but every time they come back home, it's when are we going back to Ghana? Even their kids, their hearts are 
with uh, the African people there in, in Ghana. And so you, you be in prayer for them as they continue uh, the work there in West Ghana or West Africa uh, and uh, pray for Sister Kelly. And uh, it's amazing to me uh, in that one line, there was a family that was, that was traveling 90 minutes one way to church. Every service, rain, shine, and to be honest with you, some of them don't even have cars. I don't know how they got there, whether they drove, whether they hitched a ride, whether they rode a bus, I don't know, but it's very, very seldom that families in that area have a vehicle of some type unless they're, unless they're, uh, unless they're upper upper middle class, uh, but um, 90 minutes, one way to church, there and back, every week, two to three services a week, and yet we live in a country where we can easily walk out our front door, hop in a car, and drive 10, 15 minutes, but yet most of the time we whine and complain and grumble about even driving that 10, 15 minutes. And so be in prayer for the Rosenbaum family and what God has called them to do. Be in prayer, for, of course, for all of our missionaries, especially during this time of year, around the holidays, Thanksgiving, Christmas. Uh, they don't get to see their families like we do. Uh, some of them will come back to the States at times, but they don't get to do that every year. Uh, and so they are very much in a field, kind of alienated from everything that, uh, that they know. Uh, and so, just uh, just be in prayer for all of our uh, all of our missionaries uh, and their families during this time of year. So, let's go, Lord's throne, in prayer, and then we will sing another song. Heavenly Fathers, we come to your throne of grace, and we thank you for the day you've given us, Lord. We do thank you for uh, for men in the ministry like Brother Broughton, Lord, that has served for forty five plus years, Lord, in uh, in a church. And Lord, I pray that you just bless that church, continue to use them. Uh, in the Somerset area. Lord, I do pray that you would continue to use Brother Broughton, uh, Lord. And, and uh, Lord, I do pray for the Rosenbaum family and the ministry that you have given them there in Ghana. I thank, I'm thankful for the, the good report of those that have gotten saved and, Lord, the ability to start a, a new work, a new Bible study in another area. Lord, I pray that you would continue to give them souls for their labors, continue to bless their ministry. Lord, I do pray for Sister Kelly, Lord, with the autoimmune issues. I pray that you would heal her, Lord, as only you can. Thankful for what the doctors can do and have done. But, Lord, we know you can take it away completely. Lord, I pray that you just be with us tonight. Lord, bless your word. Bless our time together. And, Lord, I pray that everything that's said and done here tonight be for your honor and your glory alone. We love you, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. All right. Brother Steve, you come. Let's all stand again, please. We'll go to page 240. 240. I have found a friend in Jesus. He's everything to me. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. The lily of the valley, in him alone I see. All I need to cleanse me fully whole. He's all, he's my comfort. In trouble, he's my stay. He tells me every care on him to roam. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of ten thousands to my soul. He all my griefs have taken and all my sorrow borne. In temptation needs my strong and mighty town. I have offered him for Satan and all my idols torn. From my heart and night, it keeps me by its power. Though all the world take me, Satan tip me so, 
through Jesus I safely reach the goal. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's the fairest of your thousands to my soul. He will never, never leave me, nor yet forsake me here. While I live by faith to do his blessed will. A wall of fire about me, I've nothing now to fear. With this man I hear my hungry soul shall fill. Then sweeping up to glory, see his blessed face. Where rivers of delight shall ever roam. He's a lily of the valley, the bright and morning star. He's a favorite stuff in thousands to my soul. Thank you. Well, she's my turn. Find your place tonight in John chapter number 16. John chapter number 16. While you're finding your place there, uh, pray for Miss Judy. She's dealing with a sinus infection and her ears have been hurting and the side of her face is hurting. And so she's hoping it's not gone into an ear infection, but just uh, continue to pray for her and then uh, talk with Miss Vivian, she just sent me a text message a few minutes ago. Her uh, uh, her uh, surgery is scheduled for 8 o'clock in Sharonville in the morning. She's got to be there at 6 a.m. And so if you would, just be in prayer for her. And she said, I am so ready to get this over with. <laughs> just get it done. So she, that knee has been causing her issues for a little while. She's got a torn meniscus in her knee, and so just uh, continue to pray for her. Uh, and then uh, it is good to see Miss Jean feeling better and able to be back with us. And uh, as soon as I seen her, I just went and gave her a hug. <laughs> we missed her, um, but uh, you uh, you pray for pray for all of those that are still feeling a little bit under the weather. And uh, it is that time of year for snotting and sneezing and coughing and all that good stuff with the weather dipping back and forth. And uh, yesterday in the 60s, not yesterday, the day before, it was in the 60s and guys out riding motorcycles and everything else. And here we are almost the first week of December and it's still, we still got some warm weather. So welcome to Ohio, the land of bipolar weather. <laughs> but uh, <coughs> John chapter number 16, Is Miss Rhonda not feeling well tonight, Brother Steve, I'd imagine. Oh, pray for Miss Rhonda. <laughs> Root canals are no fun at all. I think uh, Joel was telling me that uh, Hannah was having some stomach issues tonight. And so just, uh, just pray for all of those that are not uh, feeling well. So tonight I want to talk about a little bit about the role, the Spirit's role in our life. And one of the roles that the Spirit does in our life is it helps us to see Christ. It helps us to see what Christ has done for us. We learn, we learn more about who the Spirit is by understanding uh, what He does. And the Spirit reveals our disease and our disease being, uh, being sin. And then it guides us to our remedy, which the remedy for sin is Jesus Christ and what He's done on the cross of Calvary. And so John chapter number 16, look in verse number 8, and we're going to read verse number 8 all the way down to verse number 15. It says this, it says, And when He is come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness uh, and, and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on Me, of righteousness because I go to My Father and ye see Me no more of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to tell uh, or to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, uh, when he, the Spirit uh, of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth, for he shall not speak of himself, 
but whatsoever he shall hear, uh, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine. Therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, as we come to your throne of grace, Lord, we thank you for this ability we have in the middle of the week, Lord, to gather around your word, Lord, sing songs of praise. Lord, may we never take it for granted, uh, Lord, the opportunities that we have, Lord, to be in your house and just to hold a copy of your word in our hands freely, Lord, that we can, uh, we can openly worship you in public, Lord, that we can openly worship you, uh, Lord, together tonight. There are so many places around the world, Lord, where this would be illegal. And Lord, I pray that you would just help us, Lord, to have a, a desire even so much the more as we see the day approaching, Lord, to be in your house and to be, around, to be amongst your people. We love you, Lord. Hide me behind your cross. Fill my mouth with your words. Lord, let everything that's said and done tonight be for your honor and your glory alone. Bless the word, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Not only does the Spirit point us to Christ initially, but He also continues to, uh, to purify, do the work of purifying us, making us more like Christ, and then He guides us and helps us into service. I, you know, I heard a... Uh, I heard a illustration this preacher used about when he was in the fourth grade. He said, "I, I had uh, I stood in line to take uh, to take uh, an eye exam, and uh, he said in this eye exam I was convinced that I would be okay and I wouldn't uh, uh, that uh, that I wouldn't need glasses." And he said once the test actually started and I had to squint to even see the E on the on the wall, which is the biggest letter on the eye exam, he said, I quickly realized that I was probably not going to pass this test like I thought I was going to. And then, of course, after he failed the test, the doctor comes in and says, well, you need eyeglasses. I look around the room and there's many of us that have been in that same position where now we need eyeglasses. I may not necessarily need them all the time to do things, but when it comes to reading anymore, I find myself more and more in need of my, my cheaters, as uh, my boss calls them. Uh, Terry, the coffee shop owner, he, will, he doesn't wear glasses all the time because he says it makes him feel like an old man. And uh, he says, I am not there yet, but then if he's working on anything in the shop where he's got a focus on it, our, our uh, espresso machine, the grinder, went down the other day, stopped grinding, and so he pulled it off the counter and took it into the back room, started taking it apart, and he comes back out, opens a drawer, and he looks around, and he pulls his glasses out, and he puts them on, and he goes, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it, I don't want to hear it, and walks into the back. Eyeglasses, to be quite honest, eyeglasses are like the Spirit of God in our life. The Spirit of God will guide us, help us see clearly. It will allow us to focus more on the things of God. It shows us clearly the things that, that God is doing in our lives. And once, just like once we begin to wear those glasses, we realize just how poor our eyesight really was until we got the glasses. And so when it comes to the Holy Spirit's role in our life, it's very similar in the life of a believer. And the Spirit helps us to see through spiritual eyes, through the eyes of Christ. It reveals the problems of sin in our life. Not only once we begin to follow the Spirit of God in our life and allow Him to illuminate things and for us to see clearly when we start looking through the eyes of God, we begin to see people in the world differently. We begin to see how those in the world are no different than us in need of a Savior. Listen, there are all kinds of crazy people in this world. All kinds of crazy things happen on a daily basis. Situations can change minute to minute. People uh, people, quite honestly, do things differently 
minute to minute. Uh, what's crazy to me is you can be talking to somebody and they'll be their they'll be your best friend, and then in five minutes something could switch, and they'd be your worst enemy. That's the world that we live in, and so the Holy Spirit also guides us to find true sight through the light of Jesus Christ. And so number one, the Spirit reveals to us our disease. In verse number eight, it says that when He has come, He will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they believe not on Me, of righteousness because I go to My Father and ye see Me no more, of judgment because the prince of this world is judged. So most people have uh, have fairly good oral hygiene. Okay, bear with me for a second. I want to use this illustration because I thought it was a good one. Most most people have fairly good oral hygiene practices. Uh, we were. I'm going to tell this story because I thought it was absolutely hilarious. Brother Travis filled me in on it the other day. Uh, so Brother Travis helped me track my deer down after after uh, I got my deer the other day. And uh, we went to grab something to eat and then come back, drag her out of the woods. And uh, the boys all rode with Brother Travis. And we went and met Amber and, and Kirsten. And, uh, and I rode with Lindsay so that Lindsay could go home after we ate and I just ride back with Brother Travis. Well, evidently the boys were all talking in the back seat and one of them looked at the other and said, man, your breath stinks. <laughs> Some, kids are brutally honest at times, man. Brutally honest. But thanks to good health education and access to dental care, for the most part, most people take care of their teeth. But some may be, uh, may be surprised to learn how difficult it is to maintain clean teeth. You know, it's amazing to me how right after you get your teeth cleaned, how little time it takes to put them right back to the way they were. And you go, I brush my teeth every morning. I brush them every evening. I am... My grandpa always told us that his teeth were like stars. They come out at night and he just puts them in a cup, you know. But, <laughs> but yeah, it was always one of our one, one of our highlights when grandpa would, uh, you know, kind of slide his bottom teeth out, suck them back in his mouth. We'd just stand, sit there and stare at him for a minute. But it is amazing to me how quickly things can revert right back to the way they were. So to illustrate that point, some dentists, I have not had this done to me, but I have heard about it. Some dentists will ask patients to chew this little, this little tablet. It's a little red tablet. And then look at their teeth in a mirror. And that little tablet is red dye. And then that tablet soaks into the plaque and tartar that's actually attached to your teeth. But under normal conditions it appears clean, but in fact, you see all the bacteria on your teeth with that red dye on it. You think it's clean. Your breath smells clean. Your, your teeth appear clean. They don't feel dirty or gritty. But just that thought of looking in the mirror and you go, oh, I just brushed my teeth five minutes before I got here. Have you ever done that? You go to the dentist, you have a dentist appointment, and just before you leave school or just before you leave work to go to the dentist, you brush your teeth real quick so that, you know, the dentist, everybody does it, thinking, oh, the dentist will be so pleased. And then you get there and he, the dentist will rail you about everything that you're not doing, even after brushing your teeth. You know, the Spirit's ministry to fallen humanity is very similar. It exposes the sin like that red dye. It exposes things in our life if we listen to the Spirit of God, if we allow it to penetrate our heart and life. Most of the time, though, when the Holy Spirit of God begins to deal with our hearts and lives, you know what we end up doing? We start making excuses and trying to justify why we're doing what we're doing. 
I had this conversation with somebody just the other day. Most of the time, we, we, there are things in our lives we will pray about and we will, have, we will ask God to move in a big way in that particular area in our life. But then we use that one thing we're asking God to take away. We use that one thing as our excuse not to do anything for God. We use that particular issue to get us out of allowing the Holy Spirit of God to do something in our life. Why? Because we're afraid. We're scared of what God could do. We're scared of what God might do. And then some of it, it may not be scared. Some of it is just flat out laziness of not allowing the Holy Spirit of God to do anything. We would rather be comfortable in our problems and in our sin than allowing the Holy Spirit of God to expose something and then we have to take care of it. You realize that if you leave a problem alone and don't take care of it, you know what's going to happen? It's going to get worse over time. Worse and worse and worse. I was talking to my wife the other day, my truck. Transmission slipping like crazy. I know it's going out. I've been in that field long enough. I know what it feels like. I feel it slipping, surging. I just tor- torque converter needs a valve body. I might as well rebuild the whole transmission at this point in its life. If I don't give it any attention, you know what's going to happen? It's going to leave me stranded on the side of the road somewhere. I know it has a problem. I know there's an issue. But the longer I let it go and the more I continue to ignore it, the more I know eventually I'm going to throw that thing down in gear. It ain't going to go nowhere. It's just going to, it's going to be an overgrown paperweight is what it's going to be. Sin in our life can be the same thing. Just like that bad torque converter or that bad valve body, and I know eventually it's going to break. If we continue to allow sin to collect in our life, listen, just like brushing your teeth. If you never brush your teeth, but maybe once every couple of days, things are going to start building up and building up and building up and building up until, guess what? Everybody sees it. Everybody sees it. You realize that sin, eventually, you can't hide it. What is done in secret eventually will come to light. Your sin will find you out. Eventually, you're not going to be able to hide whatever that sin is, and it's the Holy Spirit of God is not going to expose it just to you. The Holy Spirit of God is going to expose it to everybody else. And then guess what? Then you're in trouble, and it's too late. He exposes sin. He assures of righteousness. The Holy Spirit warns of the coming judgment of the world. This convicting work is grace. You realize that's what the convicting work of the Holy Spirit of God is? It's grace in your life. It's God showing His grace, showing His mercy, saying, hey, this is what you need to take care of. You can get it taken care of and done and not have to worry about it. It won't separate us. There won't be a break in fellowship. Sin in our lives breaks fellowship with God. Just like if you don't brush your teeth, eventually people ain't going to want to be around you. They ain't going to want to stand close enough to talk to you. Yeah, that's one of the, that's probably one of the hardest things, both pastoring and being in customer service. When somebody wants to talk to you, and believe me, I like to talk to people. I love to talk to people. But when somebody neglects personal hygiene and when they open their mouth to talk to me and my eyes water worse than when I'm cutting onions, y'all, that's rough. And you stand there and you do your best to show the love and grace of God because you have to continue talking to them. You got to continue talking to them. Folks, that's what sin will do in our life. The more we allow sin to build up in our life, the more people will not want to associate with us. We need to get it taken care of. It's designed to bring men and women uh, of the world to recognize their, their need 
and so turn to Christ and thus stop being the world. The Bible tells us to be in the world but not of the world. Listen, we don't have to do everything everybody else does. We don't have to, as a matter of fact, the Bible tells us to be separated. We're to look, act, be different. We're to be the salt and light of the earth. We're not to look like everybody else. And the only way to not be like everybody else is to allow the Holy Spirit of God to point us in the direction of Christ and to reveal the disease or the sin in our life so that we can take care of it. So as the Spirit illuminates the the, the Scriptures and reveals truth to us, we, we realize that we aren't as clean as we assume we are. You know, several times a week we have to tell our kids, hey, you need to go take a bath. You need to go take a shower. Why? Well, speaking... From illustration standpoint, we're the guiding uh, spirit in our kids' lives to keep them from everybody else not wanting to be around them, keep them clean, to try and guide them and direct them in the right way, just like the Holy Spirit of God does with us. Have you ever heard somebody go, well, I just took a shower yesterday. Well, that was yesterday. (laughs) Today's a different day. Have you ever used the excuse of, well, I was in my Bible yesterday? Listen, you need to be in your Bible just as much today as you were yesterday. To be quite honest with you, if we were, if we were honest with ourselves, we probably none of us were probably in our Bibles as much yesterday as we should have been. We probably didn't focus on the things of God as much yesterday as we should have been. And probably... We're in the same boat today, not focusing the way we should have been. So when we see the righteousness of Christ compared to our uh, compared to our own righteousness, we become aware of just how far we've fallen, and the only conclusion is we're under God's judgment. These verses primarily speak of the Spirit's ministry toward the world of unbelief, but He does continue to convict believers as He illuminates the truth. Listen, when you get into the Bible, allow the Holy Spirit of God to illuminate the truth of God's Word in your life. It's more than just opening it up and we've got our... Uh, our devotionals, which was asked about tonight. I called the company. They were mailed, but have yet to make it to us. And so we're just waiting on them to come in the mail. And I'm glad that you all use those. I'm glad that you love them. I love them. Our our call to glory books. But listen, it should be more than just, well, I've got this call to glory book and I'm just going to read this for the day and that'll be my Bible for the day. And then we move on to other things. But listen, it should, be more than, it should be more than just, well, I'm going to go through my ritual of, of reading this today. I'm going to go through, uh, I'm going to do more than just read this one short devotion and read the verse that's on the, the side of the, of the page there. You know, what's unfortunate, and I'm not saying this is you, but what's unfortunate is there are other verses that go with those devotions. And most of the time, the only verses that are ever read are the one that's on the side of the page. The Bible's never opened. It's just the book that's opened. I'm not saying that's you, but unfortunately, that's what I have seen in some. I was that way at one point. Why? It was just a devotion. I open it up. The Bible verse is right there for me. I read the Bible verse and that's it. And then read the devotion and that's what I went on for the day. Do you all eat one meal a day? Most of us eat breakfast, lunch, dinner. Some may not eat much of a breakfast, but we eat a bigger lunch, we eat a bigger dinner. Listen, if we never ate throughout the day, by the end of the day, we would feel horrible. 
if we only ate maybe one or two meals a week, by the end of the week, we would literally be physically so weak from malnutrition, we couldn't function. Spiritually speaking, if we're only getting Sunday and Wednesday each week, we're malnourished, spiritually speaking, And there's no way we're going to be able to withstand any fiery darts of the devil against us. Then number two, the Spirit guides us to our remedy. Look in verse number 12, down through verse 15. It says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth, for He shall not speak of Himself, but but whatsoever He shall hear, that shall He speak, and He will show you things to come. He shall glorify Me, for He shall receive of Mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are Mine. Therefore said I that He shall take of Mine, and shall show it unto you unto you. So the Spirit not only exposes our disease, but He also shines a spotlight on the remedy, and that is Jesus Christ. Listen, whether you are saved or whether you are lost, the remedy for being lost is accepting the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary. That's the remedy for sin. But as a believer... Once you have gotten saved, once you have accepted the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, the Holy Spirit of God, His entire job is literally to continue to point your life back to Jesus Christ. When we allow sin in our life, the Holy Spirit of God begins to convict our hearts and lives and point us back to Christ. Someone once said that Jesus will be the sum and substance of of the Spirit's revelatory ministry. He says, the work of the Holy Spirit is to reveal and glorify Christ. That's what it said in John chapter 16. His whole job is to glorify the work of God on the cross of Calvary. His whole, his whole job is to continue to put Christ back in front of us. Jesus told the disciples that the Spirit would guide them into, into all truth. That's what the Spirit of God does in our life. Guides us into all truth. He, uh, and he does this not by speaking in His own authority, but by giving to us the words of Christ. So the Spirit guides us to Christ. It, it, it's in the person of Christ that the Spirit reveals truth. Uh, Matthew Henry uh, uh, expounds further. He says the Spirit guides us not only... Uh, not only uh, guides us to not only see Christ, but also to savor Him. Listen, we ought to enjoy spending time with with God. We ought to enjoy the time that we get to spend around the people of God. Listen, there are people in this world that will literally drive, as I read earlier, 90 minutes one way just to just to be in a service. Just, just to be around the people of God. Just to hear the Word of God taught. Why? Because they savor the time they get with Him. They savor the time they get to hear the Word of God. And yet, if a service lasts longer than an hour, hour and a half, most of us are looking at our watches. Well, when is the preacher going to let out? but we'll sit and watch a three-hour movie in a movie theater and never complain once. As a matter of fact, we'll watch a three-hour movie and then turn around and go home and turn the television back on and sit and watch more. Get the picture? There are those in this world that savor Him so much that they will literally hide in their basements because they're afraid of what the government around will do to them if they found out they were serving God. If they found out they were Christians and had accepted the salvation that Jesus Christ provided on the cross. 
listen, the Spirit of God in your life convicting you to want to do more for God, that's a good thing. When you do wrong and the Spirit of God convicting your heart, that's a good sign right there that you are saved. When the Holy Spirit of God begins to illuminate things in your life. But folks, we ought to want to spend more and more time around the people of God. We ought to want to spend more and more time with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, whether in an organized service or whether it's just in our day-to-day walk of just getting up every day and enjoying the time we get to spend in His Word because we have a copy readily available to us. There are people that will literally cling to one page of Scripture and it's the most dear thing that they own and they never go anywhere without it. We have misplaced priorities in many of our lives, myself included. We put things higher in our lives than they ought to be. Our relationship with God ought to be the first thing prioritized in our life. It's our relationship with God. When other things begin to take place of that, watch how your life begins to fall apart. How things begin to go downhill and they go quickly. So because the work of the Spirit, we can see things as they actually are. That's what the Spirit of God does in our life. It illuminates things the way it actually is to reveal our sin and it reveals the remedy the remedy that uh, the Spirit most often uses His Word and other believers. And so surround yourself with opportunities to be broken by the Spirit of God and to approach the One who provides that spiritual healing in your life. And that is... The Spirit of God illuminating the truth of God from His Word in our lives. And then it is our job, our position, our responsibility to deal with the things that God illuminates in our lives. Anybody have a prayer request tonight before we dismiss? Yes, ma'am, Ms. Tammy. Hmm, okay. Okay, pray for... Pray for Bill. He broke a rib trying to work on Tony's car, correct? And so you be in prayer for him. Anybody else? Yes, sir. All right, be in, all right, you'd be in prayer for his family. His aunt passed away. Pray for Brother Don, too. He's had some health journeys here recently, and so be in prayer for him. Be in prayer for uh, Vivian tomorrow. She has the surgery on her knee first thing in the morning. Uh, and then uh, she's got to be in Sharonville at 6 a.m., she said. So be in prayer for her. And then uh, continue to be in prayer for Brother Andy Sturm. They were in a head-on collision uh, on Friday night. And uh, he is bruised quite uh, Quite a lot. And so I talked to him today. First time I'd talked to him on the phone, I tried not to talk to him a whole ton because he can't take a deep breath. He's so bruised. He's got two broken ribs on his right side. Um, his right arm from shoulder all the way down to his wrist and even in his hand is just black and blue. Uh, says his forearm, he said some of the, the bruising is just now starting to come out and it's just green and yellow looking and Stomach's all bruised up from where he, uh, the airbag came out, but he still hit the steering wheel. But it's a little bitty truck, a little bitty Ford Ranger. Uh, and uh, the, uh, there was a turn on 125. He said, there's no lights or anything right there. And he said, the best, the best I understand is the guy misjudged how far we were a- away from him. And when he went to turn... Realized he had misjudged it, tried to pull it back, but it was too it was too late, and they hit head on, and uh, spun them both around, hit them in the front and then the rear of both vehicles, slapped against each other, 
and pushed both of them over off to the side. Uh, but uh, Brother Andy, I was talking to him today, and he said that in that very same spot, there was a wreck almost identical two hours before their wreck. And so it's just it is a bad area right there just where that turn. Um, he was telling me where it was, but uh, just uh, pray for him. Uh, the young man that was with him from his church, 70 stitches, over 70 stitches in his head, but no concussion whatsoever. His head hit the windshield and broke the, broke the uh, rear view mirror off, but absolutely no concussion other than the stitches he had to get in his head and face. That was it. So God was looking over both of them, that's for sure. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Amen. Amen. That's a blessing. You continue to remember their great grandbaby, Lauren's uh, Lauren's little girl, and so you continue to pray for her, Mom. And Danny Ivy, that's my dad's uncle, they went in to do a stint. And he does have uh, a couple blockages, but they're not near bad enough to need a stint. So they said they could take care of it with medication. So what a blessing that is. Anybody else? Yes. Yeah, my wife has had some more heightened pain here recently um, and so today she had an appointment in uh, Columbus back with her doctor that did the surgery and they took a couple scans today and she's just waiting on the doctor to read those so just uh, continue to be in prayer for her Brother Steve I could imagine. <laughs> How old is he? A year and a half, yeah. Having a broke leg and not being able to move, that, that's rough for a year and a half year old. That, that's rough for a 33 year old, <laughs> not being able to move. So, anybody else? All right, well, let's stand. We'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. It is good to see everybody out tonight. Be careful going home. I uh, hope everybody has a good rest of the week. Um, Saturday, I do want to mention this. Um, it is supposed to be cooler. So we are still going to go out on visitation. But rather than doing it at 10 o'clock, we're going to wait till about 1 o'clock and go out. Let it warm up a little bit. So meet here at the church between about, about 12, 30, 1 o'clock. And we'll go out, canvas an area, uh, and, uh, and uh, do our best to invite some folks to church. We've got the door hangers and everything. And so uh, we have been able to, every time we've gone out, we've been able to completely cover neighborhoods. And so uh, I am greatly uh, appreciative to all those that come out. So we will go out on Saturday, but just we'll wait a little bit longer, go out about 1 o'clock. Uh, be out for about 45 minutes to an hour like we normally are and just pass out uh, those door hangers. So let's be dismissed in a word of prayer. And uh, I'd ask if uh, Brother Steve, would you dismiss us, please? If you did not get to put your name in the basket for the name draw for the Christmas fellowship, it is back here in the windowsill.